and welcome to this week's reading vlog. It is now February 8th, so it's Monday at about 7 o'clock, and to kick off this reading vlog, I am going to be finishing off a book that I started over the weekend that I was pleasantly surprised about. So you guys probably already know, Touch of Darkness has been all over TikTok, and as one of the local buyers for Barnes & Noble, I was very intrigued about, about this. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna see what all the hype is about. And I understand. So if you are a fan of romance, slightly raunchy romance, Hades Persephone retellings, highly recommend checking this out. I have, I'm about 62% of the way through it. It says I've got four hours and 15 minutes, but you guys know I listen to audiobooks faster than they are intended. So I only have about three and a half hours left. I'm really doing this and I totally get why this has been such the hype. It's making me consider picking up the Jennifer L. Armentrout books because of all the hype on that, those surrounding those two. So I was like, okay, well they got this one right. So I mean, what else are they getting right? But I'm definitely gonna continue finishing this tonight. I also need to edit, but I will be finishing this one and then I already have a Touch of Ruin, which is book two of this one, which I'm excited about that I already have it checked out and waiting for me. So that one is on the docket as well. So that is my Monday update. I'm gonna go edit and listen to this book and I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, it's now Tuesday at about five o'clock. It is the 9th and I just now finished Touch of Darkness by Scarlett Sinclair. Here's what the cover looks like. And I thought I would talk to you guys while I was doing my nails. So I just, just finished it. And it is very saucy. I would not recommend listening to this like around other people. I mean, you do you. But like, if you feel confident about that, you do you. But it is very blush worthy. <laughs> But it is a really good Hades and Persephone retelling. It starts off with her being in the mortal realm and no one knows who she is and she doesn't have her powers or she doesn't know how to access her powers. And Hades owns a nightclub which is called Nevernight and her mom said that like she is allowed to be in the mortal realm going to college as long as she stays away from the gods, especially Hades, because they are destined to be together, but she doesn't know that. So she ends up being rebellious and she goes to Nevernight one night and things get tangled and she gets into a wager with Hades and it just takes off from there. It is very fast paced. I will say that the side characters aren't super fleshed out. We do have several different side characters and I think there's like one other, eh, potentially two other like technically like side plots like with other characters. But otherwise it's a pretty straightforward just Hades Persephone. There's not a lot of development in the side characters but I really enjoyed the development we got with the gods. Um, I like that we got to hear like snippets of them, of them interwoven within the mortal world, like people are aware of them and how they like influence the mortals lives and Persephone is also a a reporter so she's also warned about you know don't anger the gods basically and don't write about them and of course you know that she does that anyway so overall I really really liked it. I think because there's not a super fab development of like side characters, we just got to see snippets of some others, but we did get a decent like world development on obviously Earth, but like also the places that don't exist. So even though it does take place in Earth, we got to see Underworld and have that developed. We also got to see the campuses and nightclubs and such that are inspired by the gods, which obviously don't exist, which it was pretty cool. So overall, I'm rating this like four out of five stars on Goodreads. 
um, probably like 3.75. It was good. I would recommend it to people. I totally understand the hype. I don't think it's as good as it could be. I think if we got, I, I would like to see a lot more of the gods and in, in interactions. Um, also, we got no development on her best friend and she was like a pretty pivotal character in here um, just because she showed up a lot, but she wasn't developed at all. Like I know nothing uh, like about her besides her name really. So I am definitely going to be continuing. I already have the second book checked out. So I think I'm going to continue reading that one for this week, like listening to. I think I might be cheating on my D20 um, TBR. Make sure to check that out if you don't know what I'm talking about. So my D20 TBR. Um, I rolled that I need to read an arc. Technically, I'll still be doing that. I just don't want to read an e-arc because it takes me so long to get through ebooks. So I think I'm going to pick up The Lost Apothecary, which I have a physical copy of, and I feel like that's going to go by so much quicker. I also really want to get to my Chu graphic novel. So... I think I'm going to watch a little YouTube while I finish up my nails and then I will uh, let you know what I've decided to read tonight. I'm not going to start the audiobook quite yet for the second book just because if I start it I'm not going to physically read anything and I need to physically read something now that I've got like the opportunity. I'm home. It's my day off. So I want to physically read something. So. That is my plan for today anyways. And then I also still need to edit, but I'm putting that off for right now. So, yes, that's my plan for right now. And I will check back in with you guys in a little bit once I've decided what I'm going to physically read tonight. Hello, it is a little bit later. I'm done with my nails and I've procrastinated a little longer. So, I think that I'm going to pick up my physical arc just because, I don't know, I'm like craving sitting out and reading it plus it's about empowering women and I'm always in the mood to read that so and I've been doing a lot of romance I will eventually finish one last stop I swear it's super good don't take me not finishing it to being it not good it's just ebooks man ebooks kill me if you have a trick to motivate yourself to read an ebook let me know because I don't know how all you ebook or e-reader people do it but I'm gonna find Lost Apothecary. So. My jam pack shelf. So this is what I'm gonna be reading. And again, this one comes out March 2nd. You guys can't see that because it's not focusing. But yeah, I'm excited for this and I'm actually going to go show you some teas. So with this, since she does run an apothecary, it feels kind of like I need to be drinking tea with this because tea is kind of like a concoction of different flavors out of herbs. So I finally pulled out all the ones that I had not opened for my advent calendar because I just kind of forgot that I was like, I still had some left in there. So this is what I have left that I haven't tried. And I was just slowly pulling them out and then I pulled all of them out. And I was like, oh no, now I don't know what to drink, which is the problem, which I liked the advent calendar because it helped me decide. Elderberry wine sounds really good, but honey bush banana nut sounds amazing. There's also honey bush blueberry pancake. There's that one too. And there's also this decaf hazelnut cinnamon cream. I believe that would be cinnamon. Yeah. That also sounds amazing. I was kind of going to go for this one because it's chocolate orange. And that sounds really good too. But I think, I think I'm going to go for banana nut. Gosh, it sounds so good. So this one has honey bush tea, apple pieces, cinnamon cocoa nibs, natural banana flavor, natural chestnut flavor, and marigold flowers. I'm hyped for this. And like I showed you before, it also shows you the um, amounts of times that you have to cook it for and the temperature. And I'm not sure if I've ever showed you guys this before or not. So this may be like a repeat, but I also got this 
after I fell in love with her advent calendars, I bought um, this Adiago tea kettle. So what's nice about this is, this is not sponsored by the way. What's nice about this is it is a one handle or one hand um, tea kettle. So it makes it super easy to fill. Um, and then you just click that. So we're gonna fill this up real quick. This one says five minutes at 2.12, so. And it will immediately go to 2.12, which is great. Friday. <laughs> I didn't update you guys for the past two days. Wednesday I ended up not reading anything and then yesterday I read a ton. So so I am currently, it says 66% of the way through A Touch of Ruin. And I will say like, don't go into this book expecting a healthy relationship. This is a Hades and Persephone retelling and it's not even like disguised. Like they are Hades and Persephone they are gods, they are the people that are labeled Hades and Persephone. So there is a lot of anger and unhealthiness and hate sex. There's a lot of raunchiness in this book that I'm like, honestly not a fan of. Don't mind my like peacock feather if you guys can see that. What is that? Yeah, I'm not a fan of the like sexy scenes. Most of the time like, they're like, I could take or leave them and like some of them are really good like in books that I've read. But it's not that these aren't good, I just really am enjoying the gods aspect of it and like the actual plot line way more than any of the sex scenes. But I'm really enjoying it. But I just want to put this out there that this is not a relationship to idolize. Very similar to like a Harley and Joker vibe. like. This is not a healthy relationship whatsoever. You know, just have that in your mind. That being said, I am enjoying it. There is, I mean, the, the plot lines are pretty predictable, I think. But I'm still enjoying it because of the intricacies of the gods, of the different powers, how they're manifesting, that mixing in with real world. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun to listen to. So I listened to about three or four hours yesterday and then I've just been like listening to it a little bit. That's where I'm at for that one. Um, it says that I have three hours and 12 minutes left so I'm gonna try to finish this one off today and I will let you guys know what I think. I think this reading vlog is going to go a touch longer than it normally does just because I don't think I have footage because I skipped today. My videos have been very long. Let me know down below. Do you like 20, 30 minute videos or do you want something shorter? Because I have been making a lot longer videos. So that is my Friday update. And I will check back with you guys, hopefully, when I have finished A Touch of Ruin. Hey guys, it is now many days later. I, I don't even remember the last update I did. But I am updating you. So right now, it is Thursday the 18th, and I wanted to update you guys on some of my audiobooks. I'm kind of splitting my reading into two different weeks because I have this chunker, and this is going to get its own separate reading vlog, so stay tuned for that. That will be coming after this one that you are seeing right now. I wanted to update you guys on my audiobooks. So I finished A Touch of Bruin. 
that one is really good i will say that one is way raunchier than the first one and i ended up overall giving it still a four out of five stars it was really good i like the characters that it follows i don't particularly like love the sex scenes and now that they're bad i just am not interested in that in that book so take that with what you will but i can understand why it's so popular i will say like the god's aspect is like the best part for me and i will be continuing that series because i really like the characters and i like the dynamics i like the different gods I, I don't I just really enjoy that aspect of it and I like being amongst the gods not like Percy Jackson where they are the son of gods and they're not like directly interacting with most gods this one you are definitely like interacting with most of the gods that you know so overall I really really enjoyed that one I ended up giving that one four or five stars I then decided to pick up the project because this one was on one of my most anticipated reads for 2021 and I am now, I've got about an hour left of this one and it is real weird. So if you guys don't know what the project is, the project is about a sister who got into a car accident with her family and the older sister was fine and her parents died and it was just her and her sister and the older sister joined something called the project which is a cult so this is a cult thriller i've never read a cult thriller before so i kind of was, didn't know what to expect with this you have a few flashbacks between b who is the older sister in the cult and her having to cut ties with Lo, which is the younger sister. And Lo is now grown, and she is a reporter, or she is an aspiring reporter. She is an intern at a small news writer. They put out a newsletter. I don't know why I'm blanking on that word. So she's kind of like secretively investigating the project and trying to unveil it as a cult. So that's the premise of it. And let me tell you, I was not prepared for how religion heavy this was. And I'm not sure why I didn't think that it was going to be. When you are in Lowe's perspective, you are listening to the sermons and the teachings. And that is a lot for someone who's not religious to listen to. Even though like I'm aware that it's a cult and that she's investigating this part of it. It's just a lot to digest. So take that with what you will going into this book. I wish I would have had like a different mindset going into it because I was expecting more thriller and it's definitely more cult investigative style. I do think Courtney Summers writes sisters really well. And so we have that same aspect, the same way that we had in Sadie. Overall, like it's a, it's a fast paced read, but I don't know if I would recommend it to everybody just because of how religion heavy it is. But it's, it's interesting. I will say it took some turns that I was not braced for, I guess. It doesn't surprise me, but I wasn't braced for what we've gone through so far. I'm trying not to give spoilers. I think there's a lot of things that are easy to call in here. So it's not like surprising, but it's definitely like hard to digest what's happening, which I guess would make sense because it's a cult. But yeah, it's it, it took a turn and it turned real freaking weird. And I'm just like, what is happening? But I guess that's what cults do. That's where I'm at for my reading right now. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be able to finish this today. I also have several things checked out with my library with audiobooks. So I also have checked out Shipped, which is our book club pick for the Shelf Indulgence book club. And we have our live show for this one on March 2nd. I will write in whose channel it's going to be on because I honestly don't remember it right now. But we've got that coming up so I do have to finish that one. But it is very short so I think I will finish that super quickly. 
And then I also have a game of Fate, which is part of the Touch of Darkness series. And this one takes place in Hades perspective. So very similar to like the Edward perspective in Twilight. But I'm enjoying the project for the most part. <laughs> like it's, it's just weird, but I'm enjoying it. I've only got like an hour left, so I'm gonna try to finish that one today and then maybe start shipped. So you guys will get an update for that as well. So that is gonna be it for this update and I will check back in with you guys maybe tonight. Hello, it is now Friday. It's Friday and I thought I would update you guys. So I ended up finishing the project by Courtney Summers. Okay, so I ended up giving it a like 3.5 out of five stars. That was so weird. <laughs> like we got a few like what the heck is going on moments midway through and then the end just went like, what? Overall, I don't think I would recommend it to everybody, but it's definitely like a gripping book. And Courtney Summers, so far out of the two books that I have read, keeps me engaged while I'm reading it. So that has to say something. And I was talking to one of my coworkers, who's also in the middle of reading it, and I'm like, I was like being like, what is happening? So that has to say enough that I am having that much of a visceral reaction that I mean it, it's good at what it's doing so I have to give her that I just don't think cults are necessarily my thing but I mean this is my first cult book so I'm not I can't fully call that but I'm not super big about listening to sermons and such so I have now moved on to shift by Angie Hockman and this one is our shelf indulgence book club pick and I am so far two and a half hours into it. So I'm 28% of the way through and it is very similar to the Unhoneymooners and like the hating game. We have that misconception where the guy has slighted the girl and the guy has no idea what happened, like why, but they have the same reaction to each other. So I'm enjoying it so far. I do like the aspect of them being on a very small ship because it's kind of like that trope of not quite sharing one bed, but they're like stuck in a vicinity together. So overall, it's like, it's ticking a lot of boxes because it's kind of hate to love. There's like a competition aspect of it. There's like closed court or spaces. I don't know, I'm blanking on the word right now. This whole book is about two people who are up for a job a promotion and so they and they work for a company that does like travel agencies so they have to go on this trip to the Galapagos Islands on a very small boat they've got to come up with a pitch to get more people to join so and, and take their their trip I wouldn't say it's super original but it's definitely taking boxes so I'm enjoying it so far we are just getting to like the part of the competition part of like coming up with better pitches to like have a plan and they also are like competing about who can give better customer service to get like recommendations from the the guests to get sent to their boss so that's also interesting so far i'm enjoying it i'm only two and a half hours in it says i'm going to finish this in four hours and 46 minutes so i'll probably get a good chunk of it done today but i don't know if i'll finish it today but that is my update and I will check back with you guys in a little bit. Hello and it's now Wednesday the 24th. This is going to be the last clip for today or for this reading vlog because I just keep adding more on and it just like keeps getting longer and longer and I'm never going to stop this reading vlog. So I am still on the audiobook path. I finished ship. I ended up reading it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was good, it was entertaining, but it wasn't anything to blow me away. I probably won't remember it. Looking back, if you like the end honeymooners, I definitely would say that that's right up your alley because there is the miscommunication trope that is in the same as uh, the unhoneymooners. There is also the confined spaces, small spaces type of deal as well. Not sharing a room, but the rooms are right next to each other on a small cruise line, so I mean, sort of. And then there's like the competition aspect of things too, because they are both competing for the same job. 
overall it was enjoyable but it's not something that I would recommend to everybody like it wouldn't blow everybody away my last like update is I am currently in the middle of a game of fate which is the Scarlet St. Clair books it's like the the Edward book of that series so a touch of darkness and a touch of ruin are the first two in the Hades and Persephone retelling a game of fate is touch of darkness from Hades perspective and so far I am not loving it <laughs> I have four hours left and I've been reading for three hours and I'm just not like loving it and it's not really giving me any new perspectives really I'm not getting any information and like there's a significant part of me that wants to DNF it but I've already put in three hours so I'm already like I'm 44% of the way through so I'm like do I just finish it or do I start the X talk which is what I have waiting for me at the library as well so <laughs> I keep like being like I'll decide tomorrow and then I just keep listening to it even though I'm not like loving it so it's not bad it's just I don't like the audio or like the narrator and I'm not getting anything new from the book so I would say you could skip a game of fate and just read touch of darkness and touch of ruin those are pretty good I do like the Hades and Persephone retellings for that so that is my update and closing of this reading vlog I know I went over a ton of different audiobooks this reading vlog let me know down below what type of stuff you look for in your reading vlogs because I'm just kind of winging it leave me a little boat emoji if you got this far because I'm very curious to see how many people like stick around through the whole thing so <laughs> thank you guys for watching stay tuned for my Akatar oh my goodness I suppose I didn't even update you about this what I was saying was stay tuned for my a Court of Silver Flames, Akos... I don't know, that one doesn't have a good abbreviation, but stay tuned for my A Court of Silver Flames reading vlog because that is coming. But I had to set that book aside because I needed to get my arc done for my February challenge. So I have been reading The Lost Apothecary and I've been really enjoying this. And it's been a minute since I've like sat down and read something besides A Court of Silver Flames. I've been doing so many audiobooks lately. So I am on page 120 and this one does come out March 2nd so it does come out soon as me filming this here. But this is really interesting and I am really enjoying it. I wasn't like this is such a random book that was not on my radar that I'm really enjoying. So this one is all about a it takes place back in 1700s and there is an apothecary that is kind of like made to look like it's run down and so when you walk into the apothecary all there is is just like a metal or uh an aging rotted barrel of I think like ale in the middle of the room and so it looks like like you can't scavenge or, or scavenge or anything in there and the way that they communicate is they leave a letter underneath the barrel and then she like the person who is running the apothecary has like a secret hide hole and she can look in there and see when someone comes in and then go and retrieve the letter and it tells you it tells them like what they need and when they're gonna be back and then she has like this secret compartment in their apothecary where she like deals with all the poisons so this takes place like with in the 1700s she's running the poison apothecary right it also takes place or you see the perspective of a 12 year old girl who gets sent to the apothecary who she has to kill her like master or like the you know the, the man man of the house there is trigger warnings for sexual assault that is what prompted the 12 year old girl to come by her mistresses or like the madam of the house's orders is to come and get this poison so they could kill the like man of the house who came on to the like 12 year old girl so 12 year old girl meets this apothecary person and then it's all for the benefit of women so it is a place where women can come to get poison to use against the men who have wronged them in their life and then it also takes place in this day and age from a woman who has gone through she's in the, in a marriage that is horrible and she's trying or she thought it was good and she is trying to get pregnant and found out that her husband has been cheating on her so she is now in London and she goes malarking like looking through the mud and she founds this vial 
of the of the apothecary and she's trying to hunt down what this apothecary is so she's like a historian that never got to use her degree and like is investigating this so that's where this is all like the premise is and i'm really enjoying it so far and yeah it's just it's really flying through i like it this is a debut novel and i like the way that we are getting the different perspectives i will say like serious trigger warnings for sexual assault it's nothing graphic but there's definitely like you're in the mind space and i will say like for someone who is sensitive to that it definitely like i had to stop reading for a little bit because it did get to me so take that with what you will if that is a trigger maybe steer away from this book but it is a really cool book and i am enjoying it so i am reading that one so stay tuned for my next reading vlog when i or stay tuned probably for my wrap up when i talk about this so that is going to be <laughs> this however many weeks long reading vlog that this turned into stay tuned for my sarah j mass reading vlog coming soon and yeah that is going to be it like i said before leave a little ship emoji if you've made it this far and i will see you guys in my next reading vlog thank you for watching bye